So again, I'd like to welcome everyone to this webinar that is about how Elvis Dam, powered by artificial intelligence, will help you to unveil hidden content treasures and will help you to reduce your production costs. Uh, my name is Bastian Born, and with me here is my colleague Jaak van Bladeren. This webinar will take approximately 30 minutes of your time. As for the agenda of today, we're going to highlight some current challenges you might recognize. And after that, we'll show you how AI-powered digital asset management actually works. In the meantime, if you have any questions, please use the GoToWebinar pod on the right side of your screen. Uh, at the end of the webinar, we'll reserve some time to answer your questions. And if you want to discuss on Twitter, please do and use hashtag ElvisDam. So let's get started. From what we're hearing, these are challenging times. As a publisher, you're constantly challenged to create compelling content that will grab your reader's attention. At the same time, you might be sitting on a hidden treasure of archives full of digital files that could be repurposed, if only these were tagged with the right information. So let's take a deeper look at that situation. Uh, what if you would have an archive full of untagged digital files? First and foremost, if your archives aren't tagged, it means you have no information about your digital files whatsoever. And this will make them extremely hard to find since there's nothing you can actually search for. Just imagine what that means when you have 200,000 files sitting around somewhere in some archives. And problems arise when you can't find this image you wanted to go with, for example, that specific article you wanted to publish quickly. You would have to either repurchase that or order a reshoot, which can be a very costly affair. And lastly, when your files aren't properly organized or tagged, it's going to be really hard to license or resell image content to other media outlets or reuse these images in other countries via your own subsidiaries. But you could at least start manually tagging all the newly incoming images, right? Of course, you could do that, and with Elvis Dam, that's, that's easy. But you would still need dedicated people to do this for you, though, and probably on a daily basis. So what happens if you do this and start all these incoming images manually? Well, since it's a manual process, this will take quite a lot of time before you can publish the image online or in print. Also, it would cost you valuable resources you would have to dedicate to manually tagging all these files. Aside from that, since it's humans that are tagging, making mistakes is also human. Imagine publishing a picture of Alec Baldwin impersonating Donald Trump instead of Donald Trump himself. In some cases, this could even lead to fines or court cases. So let's see how artificial intelligence could help us in solving some of these issues. Uh, while there are a lot of interesting AI trends for publishers, today we'd like to focus on AI-powered visual recognition specifically. AI services like Clarify, Google Vision, Amazon Recognition, and others all use machine learning. With an ever-increasing accuracy, these services will recognize image content and provide tags automatically for those images. While visual recognition on its own is great, it doesn't automatically mean all of a sudden your files are organized and searchable. So in that sense, it's only part of the solution. So today we're having a look at what happens if you combine the best of both worlds. A powerful dam to organize, search and archive your valuable digital assets, combined with AI-powered visual recognition for auto-tagging your existing archives, as well as the flow of newly incoming images. Coming up in the demo, we will be covering three topics. Um, first, how batch tagging your existing archives will make them instantly searchable. Secondly, how these tags can be translated into any language to help you reuse these images in other countries. And third, how auto-tagging newly incoming images will dramatically save you time and manual labor. So, with uh, this said, I think it's time to switch over to my colleague Jaap van Bladeren for the demo. Yes, uh, thank you, Bastian. So what I've prepared here in my demo is um, a typical situation uh, for a publisher before you have a DAM system. So this could be a file server where all your files are organized. Um, let's say it's a magazine uh, magazine publisher. So I have two magazines here. Um, 
And this is actually my archive. So I have a folder called uh, Fun Food Recipes with some, um, some images in there and a travel magazine with some images. So let's say that um, I know for sure that I have some images with bread in my um, Fun Food Recipes folder. Um, if you would just search in Finder and search for bread, um, you actually see that I don't find any, uh, any assets here. And that makes sense because, um, well, as you, as you saw, these assets just have a generic file name, like um, a file name from a stock agency. So there's no way to, uh, to match that. So now let's have a look how um, them and AI can, uh, can help us here. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm actually going to, uh, to move these two folders to, uh, to our digital asset management system. So let's, um, let's select them. And then we move to, uh, to Elvis and import all the files. So the files are now, uh, now importing. Thumbnails and previews are being generated. And when I hit finish, everything is now, uh, now in my Elvis. So with all the, uh, the images in Elvis now, um, I want to, to add some metadata. I didn't do that on purpose during the, uh, the import process because we want to do that automatically using uh, artificial intelligence. So um, what I will do now is go to the uh, auto tag images function. And basically this will um, tag all the assets in my uh, folder and all the subfolders. So let's hit uh, the start button. And um, now the, uh, the auto tagging process will start. So what you can already see here in the background uh, is that some of these images uh, get some, uh, some tags. So um, let's say we, uh, well, we click this one. You can actually see the tags here on the right uh, uh, popping up. So just wait a moment till this uh, process finishes. So everything should be uh, should be tagged now. So now we can actually do some some searching through our archive because the complete archive is now uh, now tagged. So remember, I did that search on on bread in Finder and I didn't return any results. So let's see what happens now if we uh, if we do that in Elvis. So I search for bread and I actually get uh, get five results. Um, and it also allows me now to drill down the results. So what we have in Elvis is something called filters. And when I open my filter panel, I can actually see all the relevant filters for this, uh, for this search result. So let's choose egg, and I will see all the pictures with egg in there. Now let's have a look at um, these two images a bit more in detail. So um, I'll just open up the preview, and let's go to the, the second image, and open up my, my metadata here. And you can actually see all the text that were generated for this specific image. And um, also that the results are actually quite uh, quite good. Um, so a lot of relevant tags here that are being uh, being generated. So let's close this now. So what you've seen so far is um, uh, an all well, let's say English experience. So everything, uh, all the tags is in English. The whole user interface of Elvis is in English. Um, but um, as a publisher, you can also work in a more international environment, or maybe you just work in a single different language. So that's something we, uh, we support as well as part of the uh, Elvis Dam AI integration. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'll uh, log out. And I will actually log in as a, uh, a user who has a, a German background. So let's uh, change the user interface also to, uh, to German and log in. So as you can see, the whole user interface is in, uh, in German now. So uh, also the, the metadata is in German. So what I can do is uh, if I search on the German uh, word for bread, which is uh, brot, so let me just do that, you will actually find um, uh, all the images with, uh, with bread as well. And um, just to show you, so let's say I'll, I'll take this image. Um, you can actually see that all the tags were also um, uh, translated to German and available in German. And that works for essentially any language. So uh, some AI services can directly provide tags in, uh, in a specific language. 
but what we also use is Google Translate to, uh, to translate text to, uh, to a specific language. Okay, let's get back to, uh, to English. So now onto something slightly different. Let's say you're a content editor and you want to send out a, an assignment for a photo shoot to uh, create the um, uh, highlights of, of Paris. So some, some images of, uh, of Paris that you want to retrieve from an external photographer. What you can do is uh, send a request upload to this uh, specific photographer. So I'll, uh, I'll give it some, uh, some details. And I want my pictures to be uploaded in the production zone of the Travel Now magazine. Um, I'll hit share. And now a link is being generated that you can send out to this photographer. So, uh, so he or she can, uh, can upload their, their pictures. So let me switch to the role of the photographer now. What they will see is a very simple Elvis UI. They can browse their, uh, their images and uh, upload everything into uh, into Elvis with a simple click and obviously they can apply uh, their own metadata here so let's say uh, okay this is uh, the uh, Eiffel Tower that's uh, that's all easily done but um, this photographer you know uh, they can be busy so providing all the relevant text is still uh, a lot of work so they probably just quickly hit finish upload and you end up with a not properly tagged um, uh, uh, photo shoot. But what happened in the background actually is that I changed some settings and um, now it actually detects tags uh, from these AI services when importing them. So when going back to the, to the content editor, what they will see when everything is uploaded is a different view. So as you can already see, they will see all the uh, images with the auto generated tags. So you will see the generic tags, but also some specific tags uh, which are related to the location. So in this case, the Eiffel Tower, or what do we have here, the Notre Dame. Um, not only containing the name of the location, but also the GPS coordinates. And that actually brings me to something, something fun that I like to show you. So let's say I'll just select all these images and show them on the map. We have this nice Google Maps plugin that allows you to show where these images are on the map. So here we have the Notre Dame again and the Eiffel Tower, Sacre Coeur, etc. So this basically shows you that you have two ways to uh, to work uh, to work with with auto tagging. You can either do it. Uh, directly on import as I showed you now or um, uh, at a later moment as I showed you before with the, the auto tag uh, images option on the on the archive folder so in the last part of this demo I'd like to tell you something more about um, artificial intelligent models um, what Clarify for example uses is um, a lot of different models to do spe very specific uh, recognition on certain subjects so you have the, like the, the general model, which detects uh, general objects, but they also have specific uh, models to detect, for example, apparel, uh, to detect celebrities in, in photos, to um, detect dominant colors, demographics, face detection, and the list goes on and on. Um, a few of these, these models we, uh, we also integrated into, uh, into Elvis. You actually already saw the um, food and travel model in work. Now let's go back to Elvis and see how celebrity recognition can help, for example, a gossip magazine. So I've prepared this um, folder with gossip photos and I already tagged them using the auto tag images uh, option. And in this case, I didn't just tag them with general, but also with celebrity. So essentially all images have general tags but if it was possible to able to detect a celebrity in the photo, uh, we also have the person. So in this case, um, I have a picture here of Barack Obama and it detects Barack Obama. We have Kim Kardashian, it detects Kim Kardashian. So this makes, this makes it very easy to, for example, let's say I want to 
get all photos of Kim Kardashian, just search on Kim and you have everything. Same applies to, uh, for example, uh, Jason Statham. I'll search on Jason and I get all pictures of, uh, of Jason Statham. And it doesn't uh, work th only that way, it also works the other way around. So uh, remember that um, that problem that Bastian showed in his uh, in his presentation with a, a wrong picture of um, of President Trump, um, actually Alec Baldwin impersonating uh, President Trump. Well, that's not no longer a problem because the the, the two images that you see here, um, this is actually Alec Baldwin. Well, you see no person is being detected. This is Alec Baldwin as well. Still no person is being detected. This is an actual picture of Donald Trump, which is correct. And that also applies to the other images. So you see actually that uh, with, for example, celebrity uh, recognition, um, the detection is very precise and you will not get any uh, incorrect uh, names in your, uh, in your results. So that concludes my demo. And uh, now let's get back to, uh, to Bastian for the rest of the presentation. So thanks, Jaap, for the demo. Um, let me quickly sum up the benefits of what we uh, just saw. Um, when you auto-tag your digital assets, your time to market for publishing content is drastically shortened. And by minimizing the manual labor of tagging, you save valuable people's time and your resources. And probably the best thing about the combination of AI and DAM is that all of a sudden, all your image content is easy to search and find, which helps to turn a static archive into a valuable repository. So let's try to understand what the value of a repository could actually mean. Assets can hold different types of value. Um, a Reuters photo could cost anywhere between $20 and $200. A photo shoot might cost you $500 for a single shoot. And that single newsworthy picture you wanted to sell or use, it could be priceless. So we can probably agree that the value of a digital file can differ a lot. So for the sake of a calculation, let's assume one asset is worth $2. I guess you can imagine what 100 or 200,000 assets are worth, if only these would be organized, searchable and properly tagged. So while we're talking about value, there is one more thing I'd like to share with you before we are uh, going to have a look at uh, the questions. We'd like to make it easy for you to start bringing value to your archives and to ease the process of managing all these incoming images. So to help you get started, we have a special offer for the remainder of 2017, which means you can get an Elvis starter pack with all the necessary licenses, AI integration and AI bundle, and this would normally cost 20,000 euros. But if we can help you to get started in this year, we can offer this pack for just 15,000 or 9,000 for a one year subscription. And as a special promotion, we are partnering with Clarify, who have been so generous to partner with us and offer Woodwind customers 100,000 free tagging operations per month for a three month period. Which means that for as low as five cents per assets, you can get organized and create your valuable archive too. For more details on this special offer or a free demonstration, uh, please contact your partner or Woodwing Sales. So thanks everybody for your attention.